So, you like games that are easy to learn and quick to play. You like games where you construct something and you have that sense of achievement. You like games where you get to screw the other players, <laughs> but, but, but not literally. Therefore, this is a game you should check out. Be Avenue de Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a two to five player game in which people are playing tiles. It's a tile playing game. And this has won several awards for being such a great game. Let's have a look and see what we've got in. There's nothing in the box. Oh, yeah. <coughs> the components include a score track for all the players to keep score of how many points they've got because points make prizes. No, they don't make prizes. Um, obviously, the person with the highest score is the winner at the end of the game. The game also comes with 72 tiles. Um, my version includes the river expansion, which is free. Um, there's also another version of Carcassonne, which comes with the five expansions, but uh, I might talk about that a bit later. Um, the game also comes with 40 meeple. There are five colours, so that's eight per player. And then obviously it comes with the rules and a summary sheet. At the beginning of the game, for setup, you take all the tiles and you turn them face down like this. All except this one. This is the starting tile. As you notice, it's a different colour from the rest. It's black and grey instead of grey and black. So, you take that aside. You take all these tiles, you can give them a shuffle up like a fish in a dish, and then you make some small little piles of them, like so. Also, each player chooses the meeple colour that they want, and then obviously takes all the meeples of their choice. Okay, so with your tiles piled like this, your starting tile set out of like this, your players have all chosen their colour, then each player designates one of their people just start on the zero on the scoreboard and then we are ready to play. Now why is this game called a tile laying game? It's called a tile laying game because basically what you're doing is you're taking a tile and you're laying it next to another tile. Um, that's why it's a tile laying game. So on a person's turn they will take a tile like this and then they will attach it. You need to make it so the edges always match, so in this case the road is touching the road or the castle is joined to the castle or the grass is joined with the grass. So as you can see as time goes by the map will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now how do you score? Well this is where your meeple come in. Your meeple have four roles. They are, um, no, they're not the village meeple. They're not the YMCA. Um, let's try this another way. Okay, so these are the four roles that you can give your meeple. Now, for those of you new to gaming, these components do not come with Carcassonne. I'm just using these as reference for you to make it simple to understand. For those of you who are familiar with uh, board gaming, uh, maybe you can make a list and tell me what these games, what these components are from, what games. Okay. The robber. You can assign one of your meeple to be a robber. To do this, when you place your tile, you place your meeple on the road. Therefore, he is a robber. Okay. When your road is finished, and to finish the road, you need an end. So, for example, this road is not finished, but it will be finished if I place this tile here, because there is an end here, and here. And therefore, you will get one point per tile that your road is on. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? Then, once you've scored your nine points on your track, 
you will then remove your man and he can be neutral again and you can use him to be whatever you need him to be okay the second roll is the knight the knight will go on a castle piece so in this case if I was to play this tile and place my meeple on there he is now a knight and he is responsible for constructing this castle okay um, I may not have mentioned it but when you place a tile your meeple must go on the tile that you place you're not allowed to place it on any tile that you want okay so what will happen well once you've finished your castle and to finish your castle you need walls all the way around okay and you can make some really nice castles you will score for your castle and it's two points per tile that your castle's on so in this case two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen twenty twenty two Okay, these also come with these little um, bonus point shields, okay? And they are worth two points each. So on this map, I have two of them. So 22 plus four, 26, so I would score 26. Again, I would remove my man, you get back into my reserve to be used for something else later on. Okay, next we have the monk. Now the monk is depicted well, not depicted, but he goes in a priory. And a priory scores, let's say I've just placed this one and I put him here. The priory scores once it is surrounded with other tiles. So in this case, all the way around, you stop whistling. Um, and then that will score you nine points. And then you remove, score you nine points. And again, you can use your man for later on in the reserves. Finally, the farmer. The farmer is probably one of the hardest ones to explain. But basically, when you place your tile, ding, you place him on the grass verge. Um, I've laid him down just to make it a bit more evident uh, because when I play, it's a bit hard to tell if someone's a farmer or a robber. So it's best to have robbers and knights all stood up, but farmers laid down. Um, he does not do anything until the end of the game. Once the last tile is placed out, it is end game. And that is when he scores. He will score three points for each city on his grass that is finished. So in this case, he scores six points. Because this city is connected to his grassland and this city is connected to his grassland. Oh, and this city here. So he will score nine points. Sorry, how did he not score for this one? Because there's a road blocking. So that separates his grass from someone else's grass. So if the green player is there, that's the green player's castle. He supplies food to. And the yellow player will supply for those three. So he gets nine points. The green player, who's only got one finished castle, would only get three points. There you go. So you're probably saying to yourself, where's the screw you factor? Well, it's right here under your nose. Look down. You don't see it. Let me show you. Okay, let's say the blue player is building this castle. Okay. And it's your turn. You can place a tile and you can finish his castle. But what you can't do is you can't put your man on it and claim the points for that. You are never allowed to place a meeple on the same place where someone else is building. You cannot place a meeple on a road which someone else is building. You cannot place a meeple on a city which someone else is building. And you cannot place a meeple on a farmland. But what you can do is you can use the screw you factor. You can place the tile in such a way and place your meeple on so that hopefully on your next go you find a tile which connects the two. That way at the end of the game when you're scoring and the castle is built or the road is finished or the game is finished you get equal points to the other player. 
You can also screw over your player by having him outnumbered. So in this case, at the moment this is a separate castle to this castle and to this castle, but as soon as someone connects it, you outnumber him two to one, which means that the green player here would get all the points for finishing the castle and the blue player will get nothing. Okay? The same thing applies to roads and the same thing applies to the fields for the farmers. I just remembered, I haven't told you how the game finishes. The game finishes when the last tile is placed. After that, all farms are counted for, as mentioned earlier, but all unfinished roads, priories and cities, they get one point per tile. All scores are then communi- uh, com uh, It's the morning, this is hard work. All points are then added together and the person with the highest points wins the game. So, concluding for Carcassonne, what would I say about it? What are my closing thoughts about this game? This game is an extremely... The simple mechanics of taking a tile at random and then adding it to a map to make it bigger and then deciding whether or not to use one of your meeple uh, to gain your points is, is so exhilarating. It just after you finish the game, you just... But on a serious note, Carcassonne is a kind of a puzzle, like a puzzle. Uh, it's also a kind of like dominoes where you're constructing and building. But there is this resource management kind of thing with your meeple. You've only got a certain amount of meeple to use to gain your points. So you have to use them wisely. Are you going to attack someone else and try and claim the points that they're building towards as well? There's all these kind of little the simple facets which just make the game so interesting. Um, the things that not so cool about the game is the scoreboard is a bit too small. Um, you only go to 50 and then you've got to remember who's gone past 50. There is a variant that I use um, which is a kind of a handicap. Each time you go past 50 you must use another meeple, place them on the zero and that keeps a record of your score but it also gives you a handicap and gives all the other players a chance to catch up in score wise. Um, the other thing is the randomness of the tiles, where you're only taking one tile per time, yeah, you're just waiting for that one tile to finish off this 19 piece castle that you built, it can be really frustrating. So if you, again, if you don't like that, you can do a variant. Uh, a variant like you could have four tiles in your hand, at all, not at all times, but you play them one by one, and once you've depleted all four tiles, you draw another four tiles. This gives you chance to plan ahead, and this gives the other players chance to plan ahead as well. And keep the game moving a bit more quickly as well, because when you're taking one tile and someone's... Uh, no, does, does that go there? No? Okay. Frustrating. But apart from that, this is a board game that everybody should buy. So go out there now, get your copy of Monopoly from the attic, Use it as fossil fuel and go and buy this game. It's a lot better.